Hi, this is Pat McDonald, your host for Vote for Vermont, where our tagline is listening beyond the sound bites. Today I have two special guests. Uh, we've been trying to make this happen for a while now, uh, but William Mattoon, Bill, welcome, and uh, Gary Fry Meyer, close. Uh, both these gentlemen are very involved with the USS Vermont, which is a Virginia class a submarine, and a, a, a show on classes could that could do it, right? An entire discussion on the different classes of <laughs> submarines. I've learned a whole lot. I think these gentlemen have been on the show at least twice. And then I showed the meeting that they had with the uh, command. In March, the in command March, briefing. The command briefing. Um, so we, we love the USS Vermont. And we're going to be keeping busy soon, right? You're going to, I volunteered. Uh, Gary is the president of the support group and the gift chair for the Vermont Commission. And I don't know how we want to get started, but lots has happened. So could you tell, let's tell folks, catch them up just a little bit. Don't spend too much because we only have a half hour. Okay. But about the ship and... Well, it, when we spoke last, and again, you had the opportunity to see the command briefing. Right. And we, we learned an awful lot. We learned that our boat has been at sea over 200, of the first, 200 days of the first year. Uh, phenomenal pace, and uh, since then, they've been uh, they've been doing a number of other things that you haven't heard about yet. Some of them pretty interesting. A uh, couple of their most recent underways. One was called Operation Black Toro, and their responsibility was to be the the fox that the hounds chased, and the hounds were the United States surface and air assets. Huh. And their their goal was to avoid detection, and the other team's responsibility was to find them and track them. So that was, uh, that was quite an exciting deal, and it was good for the crew because at the end of that, they got to spend an extended amount of time at Naval Station Rota, Spain, uh -huh. which had excellent weather. I was going to say, that must have been a tough assignment. <laughs> and a great opportunity for the crew to unwind yeah. after, a, after a good exercise. Right. Uh, I think the, the second one that was, uh, oh, one other exciting thing about that, during that underway, there were two female officers on board which was the first time the USS Vermont has had a female officer on board. Huh. Uh, I think it's going to be in about three years that uh, the, the Virginia class will be uh, fully integrated. Great. But right now it's good, uh, for us. It's, it's good for us to be in the front end of that. I thought C WCAX, uh, Darren Perrin, did a really good uh, story on the ship, um, what, maybe a year ago? And a year, no, maybe no. a little bit longer. It was an excellent, if you ever want to look it up on WCAX. But they went into the where they, all the action is, and they had cardboard covering all of, all of the equipment because it's all confidential, and if they showed you, they'd have to kill Darren. So we were glad they kept it, they kept it covered up. It'll break his heart that uh, the folks that go on the tours of the boat before the commissioning, those, those, uh, those plates will not be in place. Oh, really? So you'll have an opportunity to see exactly what the sailors are You'll probably have to frisk you down for cameras and stuff, huh? Well, no there won't pictures. be any cameras on no board, nope. that's for sure. No cameras, no phones, no <laughs> pictures. But the other one that was most recent, uh, our boat was tasked to, to support the, Samander, uh, the commander's course. So prospective COs went out with the Vermont crew. Oh, And it's cool. kind of the equivalent of SEALs Hell Week in that every kind of thing that could possibly happen in a submarine happens, and the prospective CO has to be able to handle it and direct his crew to do the right things at the right times. Neat. And uh, interestingly enough, there were multiple prospective COs there, and one of the things they actually go through is a live fire exercise. So they fire torpedoes. Oh. And the good, fire, news is, fire. <laughs> the good news is, regardless of who was directing the crew, the crew responded well, and right. they sank all of their virtual adversaries. Excellent. And interestingly, uh, on the way back, the, the ship's chef created a cake. It had a, a submarine on it, and then a little flow of water, and then a submarine that was broken in half with a little red underneath it. Oh, so and cool. And he put that all together on the, you know, while, the, while the boat was moving. So mm -hmm. they awesome. do a tremendous well, job. Well, I think people it. need to know the, all of the um, sailors are volunteer for That's this correct. assignment because of correct. the nature of the assignment, the, the nature of the submarine and the things that they do. So everybody, well, first of all, has to qualify, but then volunteer and be accepted, which is, um, I just think that's the amazing part that everybody on that ship wants to be there. They have you know. to want to be there. Yeah, right, I would think. <laughs> Do you know, we asked something at the command briefing. I asked about the, the training that you, somebody had said every day they train, we thought it was six hours. The, the commander said it was eight hours. Right. I am, I, what I had hoped he would say is what, do I mean, 
it, what you're saying is probably what they do every day. They, they simulate uh, emergencies. If there is a fire fire on the, uh, on the submarine, if I mean, all sorts of things. Somebody has a heart, I don't know what they do, but Bill, you Bill do you know that's, that? That's one of the things, you know, like they continuously do it. They may not do it every day, but there's, you never know when they may have a drill. And that's what basically what they call it. And you may have a fire drill, you may have a casual drill, a flooding drill, but it's to be able to handle those right. situations. And the idea behind qualification is that you are capable of handling anything in any compartment. Right. Right. That's why the qualifications are so rigid. Right. Uh, you know, it takes about you know six months to a year to really get qualified in the submarines and earn your dolphins if you've never yeah. done there to learn all the basic systems and everything else. So it's uh, it's quite extensive. Yeah, because you don't really have any place to go on the submarine. It, you know, I mean, you've no. got to fix it right there and then, right? Stand, watch, eat, and sleep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and drill. <laughs> well, uh, Bill is a member of the Green Mountain Submarine Veterans, so right. a veteran uh, submariner. And you're in charge of, uh, in, in this particular case on the USS uh, Vermont, you're in charge of public relations. Public, public relations affairs. and Vermont events over the last yeah. uh, two years, we've been you know, scheduling events when we could. COVID kind of took a lot of those out. But before that, we were at fairs, meetings. Um, marching in the parade. Marching in parade. Yes, I, that I remember. Uh, she remembers you know, those white suits. Yes, I yes. do. That's very impressive. You know, getting newspaper articles out there about the submarine, about the crew, and what the commissioning committee is doing and stuff. So. Well, we could jump right into the to the the ceremony coming up because um, you know who wants to talk about the commemorative commissioning ceremony well, because it was sort of got delayed there for a while. Probably probably the, the biggest thing or two of the biggest things is on the 26th and the 27th they're giving tours of the boat. Yeah. You have to sign up on our website. There's this is a, September. This is in August. August. Why did I say right. September? Yeah. I knew it was 26, soon. 27 okay. August. Uh, sign up for those tours. Um, uh, We've had some questions about if they sign up for a tour, do they get an invitation? Unfortunately, if you did not receive an invitation be before, uh, everybody that did will get an invitation, but they may not actually be at the ceremony. Some of them will be, uh, you know, they get an invitation to watch it on the website, and we'll have that probably posted up on our website so that people can uh, find oh, that that's link good. and stuff. Um, but it is important to remember that the day of the commissioning event, uh, anybody that does have an invitation that's going must meet at the Marriott Hotel where buses will take them in. Otherwise, they will not get into right. the, to the event. That's probably so. because it's a small... I remember you were telling me about uh, an event there that, that the whole town was sort of like overcome, yeah. you know, uh, with, with <clears throat> people and parking and well, this is buses more for, are better. more for security for oh, the Navy. Oh, ah, yeah, interesting. Security thing. Yeah, for sure, not to get the vehicles too close. Makes sense. So important thing for folks to know is they can sign up. They can still sign up for a tour on the 26th or the 27th on the ussvermont.org website. Yeah. Right now we're about 55% full. Oh, wow. And uh, you know, the clock's ticking. Okay. But uh, as Bill said, because you're able to take a tour does not necessarily mean you'll either be getting a ticket for yep. the pier, the, the theater at the submarine base, or if neither of those things, then you'll certainly get an announcement of how to Okay, you can do in. live stream. Yep. We've, I think we've all become expert on live stream. <laughs> That's all I'm doing these days is talking to friends over live stream. And of course, after the event, there'll be a, a, a post uh, commissioning ceremony uh, uh, gathering at the uh, uh, recreation there on the area, what they call the North Lake. Uh, where they'll have a, a, an event, it'll be a consolidated event, which normally during the commissioning, they have several different events for the crew and stuff. Right. <clears throat> so people will actually be, get a chance to really meet some of the crew and stuff at right. that event. Uh, I do have some information that invitations are expected to be mailed next week. Right. So what people an should honor be, to get one. So, <laughs> so people should be looking for them that, that did get invitations. Yep. And they do need to respond within sure. five days after yeah. they, well, they get it. Snooze, you lose, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And where this is being held? At, at, at the Naval Submarine, submarine Base in Groton, uh, Connecticut. In Groton, Connecticut, right? So. Which is awesome to see, anyway. Right. I have actually been there without ceremonies; just been there as a tourist 
And an added benefit is uh, we'll have the 40th Army Band with us this year. Oh, exciting. To participate in that. Oh, nice. Yep, that, I uh, saw them at the Gettysburg reenactment, the 150th. Very impressive. That so was great. We're very fortunate to get yeah. a Vermont band down there. Yeah. A group of well, we have just so people, I, I did not bring the officers' names, they, they, but we have two Vermonters who serve on that. And one of them is, J, is uh, Senator Jane Kitchell's mm, cousin, nephew, nephew. nephew. Ian. That's uh, Ian, <laughs> Ian Blackmore from yeah. Danville, Vermont. Right. So, Excellent. So, um, we, we are very fortunate. We've had a lot of, you know, talking about food and stuff like that. That uh, If I can, I'll mention some of the... Oh, please do. Okay. Well, some of the food vendors that are really helping out uh, here in Vermont is like Cabot Cheese. For sure. Uh, Wilcox uh, Ice Cream, I believe. Mm. Dock and Farm, a Vermont country store. The Vermont Coffee Company, Poulton Mountain Winery, which provided the bottle of wine or champagne that was christened, nice. used for the christening, Long Trail Brewery, and also Fort St. Star Brewery. So they, uh, these people really stepped forward, yeah. and a lot of people we're, have contributed. We're very so. lucky in Vermont that all of our businesses, they feel part of the community, and when you need them, especially, I must say, Cabot. Cabot's just everywhere. And Ben and & Jerry's, I don't know if they're participating in this, but um, they, they just seem to help you ask them and they say yes yeah. Yeah. Well, very few knows oh yeah for sure there will be tours the day of the commissioning on the boat after the, that and uh, one of the things that uh, the crew has asked for the ex and the officers is if they have a decal local business uh, ah. to bring it and put it on their bulkhead a wall nice. to kind of promote Vermont uh, nice. I've sent out a a number of emails to chamber of commerces around the state asking them to contact their businesses to if they yep. could provide those either to me or to the uh, uh, post office box here in montpelier for the uh, for the committee That's and good. we'll make sure that they get down there for people who cannot get down there and actually stick them for sure that's so, great so. that's a nice idea thank you. that's good for them to do that helps the businesses and if we fill up the the bulkhead by the stairs uh, they've got another location to put extra stickers on excellent so the idea is for folks that tour each one that comes down the ladder put gets a, to put a sticker have to on put a wall. campaign for a vermont sticker on <laughs> yeah. absolutely yeah. be happy to take <laughs> one with them yeah, there you go <laughs> excellent so. Well, we've sort of supported it by running all these places. Absolutely, I, I'm just and it's greatly, on this whole it's greatly thing. appreciated. Great. Well, I've volunteered, and we have to talk about how people can help out there for the committee. And you said next week we'll get a, this is what we'd like you to do. Do you put me to work somehow or other? Well, uh, uh, next week we'll, we'll have tickets come out. But uh, as far as what, we, what, we, what we're looking for folks to do is to get involved. And uh, the, the, the way, effectively, the, the uh, celebration, the ceremony will occur on the 28th. Yeah. And uh, when that's over, the Vermont Commissioning Committee has fulfilled its mission. Right. And it, and uh, it goes into the sunset. Yeah. And the USS Vermont Support Group picks up from that point going forward. We've been around for about a year now. We've got uh, just over 50 members and growing. Yeah. But what we're constantly looking for are Vermonters who are interested in what's happening with the right. USS Vermont. Uh, they may have some ideas on, on some support projects, that sort yeah. of thing. And uh, we certainly welcome all, all Vermonters to be a part of this going forward. And if, if you're just interested in knowing what's going on with the boat, we can accommodate that. We'll send you newsletters. We'll give you updates. Yeah. If you want to get involved, you know, we're, we have a number of projects and programs, some ongoing. And uh, if you're really committed, and then we've got officers opportunities as well. Right. So uh, cool. there's a lot of ways for people to get involved. And uh, one of our missions also is to educate. And we spend some time talking about uh, the mission of the, the USS Vermont. We talk about uh, some of the technologies. Uh, and that's always of interest to the, to the younger folks. And, and for example, our boat uh, has been tasked repeatedly with new research projects. Because uh, when, when they have a new idea or a new twist, uh, who can we try it on? The Vermont's on the front of the line. So recently, we've had uh, an atmospheric study that was done during Operation Black Toro where they're checking right. on the quality of the air. They have new oxygen scrubbers. They do a great job, and they were just doing some testing with that. We also had, uh, we had the sailors get glasses. Uh, a group of sailors got glasses that either kept blue light out so oh, that they could go to sleep quicker, or accelerated blue light coming in, which would allow them to wake up quicker. Huh. So if it makes them more aware, if they roll out of, uh, out of a bunk and they are at a standing a post and they've got these glasses on, 
they, they're much quicker. That is great. Well, every little advantage that our sailors have, For uh, sure. we take advantage of. That's excellent. Uh, there was one other thing just recently, when they just left now, they left with new technology steam suits. Now in the event something happens in the engine room, one of the pressure pipes breaks or anything like that, they have to put on a steam suit to go in there and fix the problem or rescue a crewmate or something like that. So uh, they, the prior ones were apparently on a little bulky and un unable to be, you know, or managed. Dexterity or whatever they yeah. did, right? Yeah, and uh, they, so they got a new one to test. And once again, it's the Vermont at the lead in that role. Awesome. I really like the glass idea, glasses. <laughs> Speaking of never going to sleep at night, but that's another show. Well, there were a lot, of, show. a lot of How sailors of didn't want to give them back at the end of the project. Oh, wow, I bet. <laughs> that's really cool. Um, is, is a Vermont company involved with that? That's not a Vermont company. Oh, it's not. I was just thinking of um, somebody here that's very involved with glasses and is... Um, uh, maybe the people that revision? Yeah. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> maybe the people that, re they, that supported the Air National Guard's uh, air yeah, show a couple years ago? That's what I was thinking about. Yeah, uh, right. they, they might be a competitor at some point. Oh, I see. Interesting. Because <laughs> they've, they've got some new technology that they're always working on revision. Absolutely. Yeah, cool. Excellent. Well, we had the, uh, um, the head of revisions come on the show and talk about uh, all the stuff that they're doing. So one of the things, speaking of the places here in Vermont, uh, Stafford Technical Center, um, created this bell? Well, it, it's uh, a while ago, the crew noticed a bell stand on the USS Indiana. And basically, when the, when the boat's at the pier, there is a, a guard station. Right. And that person has to run over to the ship's bell, which is mounted on a rail. Yeah. They have to run over and ring it when the CO comes on board. Oh. And if they don't see him at time, it, it, it's a long run over to them. <laughs> so they saw that the Indiana had a, a portable bell stand that they were able to take with them wherever they went and bring it out on the pier. And they said, boy, we'd love to have something like that. So we poked around and looked for welders and looked for steel companies. And um, we weren't making a lot of progress. And then we happened across uh, Stafford Technical Center. And uh, you'd rather be lucky than good. The person that leads the power mechanics and welding curriculum there is a former Navy hull technician. Oh, oh wow, excellent. So that's when you Welcome know it's to meant, Vermont. That's when you know it's meant to be. Yeah, right. But they created a, a beautiful bell stand. Uh, you'll see pictures of it on the website, and uh, we'll certainly have it with us at the reception uh, for the commissioning. Is that the kind that, that like the, the rests on there and can and the bell can go well, back it, and forth, or it's, whatever it's kinda, the words are? It sits on a, it sits on an H frame, and uh, uh, the, po the arms locks oh, on, yeah. and then at the top there's a V where the bell, which has a oh, permanent oh, arm on it, the bell just sits down in that V. Oh, interesting. So that now sits right beside the, the guard shack. Oh. So at, at, at a moment's cool. notice, you, you can, can reach out, bell. ring that bell. It's the, the, it's the pride of the All hands on deck, right? Yeah. Is yeah, that, that, the, they're known as the quarter deck watch. So yeah, whenever the captain leaves or comes aboard, oh, really? they ring that bell. So. Interesting. Well, do you know, I, I love our tech centers in Vermont, and that's another whole, uh, we've done a couple of shows on tech centers. We have got some, and some of these, Stafford and others have rest of c cooking schools there that, that could compete with any restaurant. They are amazing. I've always, when I'd go to visit, I was commissioner of labor, and I go to visit usually around lunchtime on any of these places, you know, just in case they wanted me to have lunch. Uh, it's just fabulous there. Uh, a lot of them are open to the, to the public, but what they can do, that's it's They really, did an impressive awesome. job, and that that's bell stand great. has a little plaque on the back that says Stafford Technical Center on it. Excellent. So for the next 30 to 35 years, about 2,000 sailors will be coming through the USS Vermont and have an opportunity to see that and hear the backstory. Excellent. I love Vermont. So also you were talking about, and I think probably all the people that you were mentioning, there's a Dolphin Scholarship Fund virtual auction. My ears are picking up because I like virtual or whatever auction. So I'm a big auction person. Well, it started on the 23rd of July, and I think it ended on the 28th. Oh, really? But uh, basically the Dolphin Scholarship Foundation is a, is a group that supports uh, funding for sailors, wives, and children. Nice. And uh, every year they have an auction down in Groton. And of course this year with COVID oh, concerns, right. it was virtual. Right. So they reached out to us to, uh, to get some help with, with Vermont products to put on this auction. Super. And, and I'll tell you, we had- Is it a uh, silent auction or did you actually, can you a barter? No, you it's, a, it's a, you know, the, the current price is on the website right, and, and then you, you bid just, above and that sort of that's thing. That's the kind I like. But, I, am, I am so in love with auctioneers. <laughs> Seriously, I, I just, a really good one like at the Meekum 
um, uh, or the, uh, the you know the high end car shows that they have on television. We used to go to a lot of them and just wow. I sit and watch them. They are amazing. We had uh, we had 16 businesses respond in support of this. Uh, everything from, from Cabot Creamery it's, at the yep, high end. You could always count on Cabot. Yep, right. Uh, four ski resorts in the southern end of the state uh, nice. offered up at lift tickets. And everything from there down to a, a, a one-man shop in Montpelier, Dobbs Maple, who put up a couple of, uh, a couple of bottles of maple nice. sugar. excellent. So a full range of people, and, and by the time it was all done, we collected over $2,000 worth of Vermont products. Terrific. To provide to this Dolphin Scholarship Fund auction. Oh, excellent. And what is the scholarship fund for this for the well, children? Yeah, it's for the the sailors, wives, and children. Dependents. So for Dependents. technical Dependents. centers, college. Oh, that's continue. wonderful. Good for right. us. So. How long are the sailors gone? I mean, what's the length of time that the families are without uh, their dad that or husband would depend or, on or the wife? The, a lot of it would depend on the mission. Uh, you could say most of them, most of the patrols are going to be maybe a short patrol would be like two weeks. But most of them are going to be somewhere around uh, 60 days to 90 days. Oh, oh. And, that's uh, a pretty big clip of time. And I say a lot of it depends on, on the, what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, uh, the fast attacks operate continuously. Uh, the uh, ballistic missile submarines are on a kind of a schedule where they rotate uh, with, with two crews and stuff like that. But yeah. talking about support, uh, don't forget the Vermont Sugar Makers Association which has okay. contributed uh, very substantially. Nice. And uh, they have agreed, uh, from, what, <clears throat> from what Gary was saying, to um, contribute over the next few years that each county will, yes, I will provide yeah. uh, 40, is it 40 or 40, 50 uh, pints of quartz? 55, but wow. that's, yeah, that's one of the programs. So yeah, every, year, the program. every, right. every year we'll contribute. So 14 counties times, that's a lot of maple syrup. Well, we signed up for, for the first one was Orange County, and, uh, and that, uh, that went very well. Uh, they, they made beautiful bottles because it tasted, they tasted better in glass. Oh, uh, yes, and, that's true. And uh, it was uh, with a custom label. Uh, very well done. What a great collection to have. Well, if, if people know this is going on, to have 14 different um, glass glasses from. Well, I, I don't know what next year, uh, next year it's uh, Lamoille County. And uh, I think I have a contact the following year for Addison County. Excellent. But every year there's going to be a new county that supplies the 50 pints right. of syrup. That was Excellent. the agreement with VMSMA. And we also are working closely with the Vermont Specialty Foods Association. When it right. comes time for donations, that's who we go to. And, and again, uh, a lot of names that you've heard, uh, yeah. you know, Vermont Nut Free Chocolate, uh, 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 the break, a bakery in South Burlington. Uh, I, just, I just couldn't say the name off the top of my head. But there's, there's, probably, there's probably between 20 and 25 companies that have donated and supported us, most of them coming to us through VSFA. Nice. So it's, it's good to have partners like that for your programs going for forward. For sure. That's great. Well, again, Vermonters, what can we do? We can't <laughs> we, say no. We count on them. Yeah, no, we do. And there, it's real. And apparently, COVID, where you would think the nonprofits and stuff would re, be struggling, and I'm sure some are, but people have actually become more generous during COVID, realizing the difficulties that that people, that nonprofits right. and other organizations are facing, that they've actually reached deeper, uh, which seems to be the story I'm hearing back that that because uh, i thought oh how are you doing uh, some of the nonprofit people i know and they said we're doing great because people have just stepped up well i think we also know how fortunate we are in vermont to have the numbers that we have relative to covid yeah, and there's well, a lot more less fortunate true. folks that, right uh, exactly could use our help exactly so we've got four minutes left um, and I know that you all have some stories that perhaps you might want to share with folks, just some interesting tidbits of why you got involved. Obviously, a retired uh, submariner. Well, actually, I retired from the Coast Guard. Did you really? <laughs> I did. Well, my cousin is in the Coast Guard, so we like that's in my family. But I went from, uh, I spent, you know, did four patrols on fleet ballistic missile submarines yeah. and, and was qualified there. That's where I became, you know, a qualified submariner. Uh, I was approached by a former shipmate of mine who is uh, the, the commander of the Green Mountain base. Uh, I hadn't seen him in 40 years. <laughs> And uh, he asked me to join, and you know, couldn't refuse. 
Uh, so I ended up getting involved with the commissioning committee, and uh, you know, and, and from that I started looking for submariners here in Vermont. I read a letter that you wrote in doing my research for the for the shows that you wrote a letter looking for looking for looking for submariners, submariners here in Vermont. Right. Right. Uh, initially, we had about uh, thirty members for the Green Mountain base, and we're up to about sixty members, and we've you know we've we've contacted between sixty and eighty members. Uh, uh, former submarine sailors here in Vermont, and uh, and every one of them has come forth and they you know, want, want to support. The, you know, they just have you just have that ingrained in you. So it's, uh, uh, you know, it's it's been a wonderful That's experience. Uh, I don't know if I'd want to do it again. <laughs> Age creeps up on us. But, uh, but uh, you know, getting involved and supporting the crew and meeting the crew, you know, you just can't ask for a much, uh, right. much better bunch of guys. Yeah. And, uh, and everybody within the committee has been very supportive. And I just, I, they must all be so smart and technically savvy, just young, young men and women. I mean, just because this is a state of the art um, ship, right? Is the ship is. the right word, I hope? Is ship the right word? A boat. Or boat, boat. okay. We call I, know, boats. I know it makes a difference of what you <laughs> so, call it. They're as big as a ship. That is a boat. But they've boat. gotten boat, right boat attached to them. So. Okay. Yeah, I have uh, several cousins who were in the Coast Guard, and they loved it. One of them's still in. I mean, he's just he's not yeah. going anywhere. He loves it. But, uh, you know, they're a unique bunch of, of people. Uh, right. Submarine sailors, as I said, it's a volunteer service, and I think that makes it even more so. Yeah. Well, I told you, my dad never served on a submarine. He taught. He was uh, in taught submarine school um, for the sub for people that wanted to be in okay. become a submariner. And he was um, I'm trying to remember where he was teaching in Rhode Island. Maybe. It could be either, either the two submarine schools or the one submarine school they have was in New London. They used to have uh, one out on the West Coast, but no, I, yeah, I'm was, not sure if that still, still so exists or not. Maybe but. in New London, yeah. I didn't do anything with those books. I have books from him and somebody wanted them. I will have to pull them out and mail them. Somebody from, from the association wanted to see the books that dad had, that we've had, that dad used for teaching, which were clearly cool. above this pay grade. Club my head. I look through it. I'm oh, maybe not. But anyway, do you have a little story to tell? We have a few seconds just, left. Just <laughs> simply, uh, uh, the, I got involved uh, because of they, they needed help with a website. And as as you know, with a committee, when you get involved, right. it just expands and expands. Yeah, yeah, and expands. yeah. Right. But uh, when it, I was probably driven more, my son works for Knowles Atomic Power Labs. This is uh, their their, uh, nice. their logo, and it just means never stop. So the nuclear power never stops. Yeah. But uh, yeah, my son Stephen uh, was actually on the Alpha cruise for, with the Vermont. Oh, nice! And had the opportunity to go out the first time. It went fast and deep. So uh, you know, his involvement. My father was very big in supporting veterans as well. Great. So that that uh, lineage is what brought me to to Good for you. Uh, my interests. That is excellent. Mm. We've had a lot of shows on nuclear power. I have a friend who's a nuclear physicist, and she was very involved. Uh, very actually, she's written books and all kinds of stuff. And I, it's just amazing what it, it can do. So anyway, we have run out of time, gentlemen. We could talk for an hour, <laughs> but um, I really thank you, and I wish you a lot of luck with the commissioning, and um, hope to have you back. Thank you for tuning in. Please sign up. Please help. These guys deserve, and men and women, deserve our support and our help. So see, it's Pat McDonald from uh, Vote for Vermont, where the tagline is listening beyond the soundbite.